All right. Um, good afternoon, everybody. We're going to get started now. Welcome to the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center's Quarterly Funding Opportunities Webinar. Just a few housekeeping items. All attendees are in listen-only mode. If you have any questions, please submit it in the chat box, and we will get to as many of the questions as possible at the end of the webinar, um, kind of as time allows. Also, we are recording this webinar, and we will post a recording to our website, as well as the answers to the questions posed. Um, in this webinar, we will cover two Mass EEC programs that are currently accepting technology innovation proposals. As a note, Mass EEC offers these webinars approximately once every quarter, and we aim to cover programs that are of timely relevance. Today, we will be discussing Mass EEC's Innovate and Deploy Mass programs. As I mentioned, we will be covering two of Mass EEC's Clean Technology Innovation Programs. I'm Corey Grunbeld, a Program Manager in Mass EEC's Innovation and Industry Support Division. In just a moment, I will be providing an overview of Mass EEC and our technology development programs. Then our first presenter, Eric Logan Hughes, will cover the Innovate Mass program. Eric Logan is a Program Manager at Mass EEC and works on both the Innovate and Deploy Mass teams. And lastly, Ariel Horowitz will cover the Deploy Mass program. Ariel is the Director of Technology Development at Mass EC and oversees both of these programs. Mass EC's mission is to grow the state's clean energy industry while helping to meet the Commonwealth's clean energy, economic development, and climate goals. We fulfill our mission by investing in programs that increase renewable energy adoption by residents, businesses, and communities, connecting employers, job seekers, students, communities, and investors to the clean energy industry, as well as helping to spur innovation through infrastructure, funding, and technology development support. Mass EEC's Innovation and Industry Support Division offers a suite of programs that fulfill its mission by supporting clean tech startups and researchers at various stages. While we are only going to focus on two of these programs today, I wanted to take a moment to quickly go over all the programs that we offer in case any happen to pique your interest. As you can see, we have a variety of programs aimed at helping companies and research teams in the research prototyping, demonstration, and commercialization stages. Details on all of these programs can be found on MassEEC's website, MassEEC.com. All the green boxes on this slide represent grant programs, while the blue boxes represent investment programs. Starting on the left of this slide, we have the two programs we are featuring today. Catalyst and Amplify Mass. Catalyst is an early stage prototyping grant program. Oh, my apologies. Um, two programs we are featuring today, um, Innovate Mass and Deploy Mass. But um, on the left of this slide, we have two other programs. Um, Catalyst is an early stage prototyping grant program that offers grants of up to 65K. Amplify Mass offers up to 500,000 in cost share funding to companies or researchers that are pursuing a prime award, either federal or non-federal, such as DOE or NSF grants. Next, we have Accelerate Mass, which is an investment program that provides up to 150,000 in convertible notes to clean energy graduates of approved accelerator programs. Of a similar company stage, we have Innovate Mass, which is a program that we will be focusing on today, which provides up to $250,000 to demonstration projects of new clean energy technologies. We'll go more into depth in this program in a moment. As the company and its technology matures, MassEC offers equity investments of approximately $500,000 and venture debt investments between $100,000 and $1 million. On the far right of this slide, we have Mass EEC's Deploy Mass program, which will be the secondary focus today, which facilitates the adoption of clean energy technologies at public project sites. Deploy Mass is the other program we'll be focusing on. 
Along the entire x-axis of this chart, you can see that MassDC offers workforce development programs, which essentially funds interns at all company stages. And with that, you will now hear from Eric Logan Hughes as he discuss, discusses the Innovate Mass program. Thanks, Corey. Um, so Innovate Mass is the grant program located in the center of this slide. Um, as you can see uh, on the x-axis, um, the technology readiness level that is ideal for Innovate Mass are products or technologies that are in the demonstration phase. So some quick highlights on Innovate Mass. Uh, Innovate Mass can award grants of up to $250,000, um, and there is a 50% cost share requirement on the part of the company. So if you're applying for $250,000, it is expected that you will provide up to, uh, or you will provide $125,000 of cost share. Um, we also offer third-party technical support uh, through the Innovate Mass program. Uh, where a consultant will work with you to help you manage the project. Innovate Mass uh, is open twice a year. Uh, the current RFP uh, for summer 2019 is due June 10th, and there will also be a winter round opening sometime in the uh, October or maybe September uh, timeframe. Again, the TRL range uh, for Innovate Mass projects are in the five to seven uh, range. These uh, demonstration projects uh, are for uh, products that are in the advanced prototyping stage, but not quite commercially ready yet. It's also conditional that the company applying for Innovate Mass is based in Massachusetts, and we'll go into more detail on what uh, being based in Massachusetts it means. For this particular round of Innovate Mass, we have a spotlight um, on data science and machine learning. The spotlight opportunity is not a carve out, but we have a uh, worked out partnerships with certain companies that would be willing to uh, listen to your proposals and potentially partner with you moving forward. Um, and you may also apply uh, for Innovate Mass as a data science and machine learning uh, product without a specific um, partner company that we have provided. So more information on this spotlight. Um, each round we offer spotlights. Again, this round is the data, data science and machine learning spotlight. We've sort of uh, loosely defined uh, the spotlight as highlighting technologies that can accelerate adoption of clean transportation tech, reduce building energy use, and lower barriers for clean energy deployment. Uh, a more specific uh, definition of uh, data science and machine learning technologies can be found on page uh, 10 of the RFP document uh, linked on the website. The two companies that we have uh, talked to about um, partnering under this spotlight are Enel and National Grid. You can reach out to them uh, for potential project partnership opportunities. Um, the information is listed on the RFP and the deadline for reaching out to them is a week from today or next Wednesday, May 13th. What we look for um, in an application uh, are the following requirements. The application form lists, uh, or has sections rather, where you can fill out an overview of the technology, sort of describing what it is that your product does, um, the target market and the role of the project and the path to the market, as in what will this grant uh, enable you um, to accomplish that will get you to the commercially ready stage. In order to demonstrate that, we'll ask you to fill out a project plan, sort of uh, describing the what, the when, the where, and the how much uh, is needed in order to demonstrate uh, your technology. Importantly, as a Clean Energy Institute, we will also ask you to uh, sort of identify what is the climate impact of your technology. Uh, we do this through a section that's called the Total Addressable Carbon Analysis, uh, which we'll go into a little bit more detail on later. And finally, as a Massachusetts-based uh, state agency, uh, we wanna see what the benefits to the Commonwealth are that uh, your demonstration project will bring. Sorry, go back one second. Um, We'll also uh, ask you to fill out forms on uh, the budget. So how will the grant funding be spent uh, towards demonstrating your, your product? And also a draft project work plan outlining how you will actually use the grant funding to accomplish those goals um, listed in the, the five bullet points above. So one uh, component of the project work plan is uh, the milestone table. So one thing or one way you can think about uh, this table 
is that each milestone is sort of like a chapter in a book. Um, we want you to describe to us what is the scope of work or what is the actual uh, milestone that will be accomplished um, as you go through the project, an estimated project completion date, what is the grant amount uh, that you will need to complete that, uh, that milestone, and what is the cost share uh, that you will provide uh, for completing that milestone, again, with cost share being 50% uh, of the grant amount requested. It's pretty common for um, the first milestone to be something aligned along the lines of work plan approval, um, as we can't begin paying uh, in any of the projects until milestones are completed. So if you're coming in with something uh, like software under data science and machine learning, where it might be more difficult to demonstrate something up front as the initial coding is being done, it's okay to list uh, approval of the first uh, of your work plan as the first milestone to get the cash up front that you need to begin the project. Associated with the milestones uh, is a deliverable chart where you'll actually list out what are the deliverables that you will show to demonstrate that you have completed the milestone. An important uh, column here is the confidential column on the right, where you can list whether or not a deliverable is confidential or not. It's important that for each milestone, we receive at least one non-confidential deliverable so that we can verify that the work was actually completed and that you've demonstrated that portion of the project. But we understand that there are confidentiality concerns for some startups. So if you would like to uh, submit confidential deliverables to the third-party technical consultant, who will then screen the deliverables without showing us any of the files, but let us know that you have demonstrated and completed the work that you said you would, that is, a, that is an okay way for you to uh, retain your privacy while also making sure that we have uh, visibility into um, the work actually being demonstrated. Uh, the final uh, portion of the uh, project work plan is the budget. Um, in, important components here, um, all of the light blue cells are formulas. Um, you will not need to edit any of those cells. Um, the cells that you will be editing are the light green cells. So starting with the cost share, again, there's a 50% cost share requirement for this program. So in that portion of the budget, you would list out who is providing what cost share from your side. That can be coming from your startup. It can be coming from your project partners. It's okay if it's across multiple organizations, provided that we have approved uh, you to work with those organizations as a part of your scope of work and they are listed here in the cost share portion of the template. The direct labor template is where you would list um, who is doing what uh, from your team on this project. Uh, we do not want uh, specific names in the uh, team member column, the name and title column on the left. Uh, we want the, the roles that people will be um, working under uh, your project in. In the event that you switch out staff, we don't want to have to uh, do a contract amendment to switch the names to a later date. So just list the, the uh, professional title that will be uh, performing the, the work. The hourly rate column is fairly self-explanatory. This is where you fill in the rate at which that role will be paid, the number of hours that they will be uh, contributing to the project, and then the allocation of grant dollars that will be going towards paying that person and the cost share amount that you'll be providing um, for that role as well. The subcontractors uh, portion of the, the budget is uh, for people not in your company that you'll be uh, looping in to work on, on the project. Uh, similarly, the name and title should not be specific people, like first and last names, but just the roles and the hourly rate, the number of hours, the grant amount, and the cost share amount are all the same as in the direct labor portion of the spreadsheet. Finally, there's the direct materials and costs uh, portion of the budget where you'll list out the direct materials and costs that are necessary for the completion of your project. Uh, the more specific, the better, so that we can understand what exactly it is that you're purchasing, or, sorry, or what exactly it is that you're purchasing or what's necessary to demonstrate your technology. So in terms of what we're looking for, um, for projects that, that we would like to fund, um, we want projects that demonstrate real technical merit. Um, you know, the technology should be new and interesting. It should be innovative. 
It can be innovative in the sense that it's never been seen before, or it can be innovative in the sense that it's a combination of existing technologies that create a new use case that hasn't been seen before. We also want uh, projects that, and technologies that have strong commercialization potential. In your application, you need to demonstrate to us that you clearly understand the market and the customers, that this need actually exists within the market, and, and, and identify any commercialization barriers that this demonstration project uh, might help you overcome. We also look for strong project work plans. Um, this is demonstrated through the uh, portions of the application form that we just walked through. You know, we want to see a project that is achievable within the timeline and the budget. Um, we want to see that the demonstration is going to result in an improved business case for the technology and the product, and that you have uh, delineated or, or listed out um, a, a project workflow that has reasonable milestones that can be accomplished within a reasonable time frame. All of these factors together contribute to a high likelihood of success, which is ultimately the kind of project that we want to fund. We also look for projects that have a strong programmatic fit, um, which is demonstrated through benefits to Massachusetts. Um, you know, will your project or your technology align with Commonwealth energy policy? Does it provide additional in-state uh, benefits like uh, contributing to facilities, contributing to workforce development, more jobs created, manufacturing brought to the state, things of that nature. And importantly, we are, again, a clean energy center, so we need to see that there is a real car, uh, climate impact um, for your product, which is, again, uh, demonstrated through the total addressable carbon analysis, which is a portion of the application in which you will identify how big is the wedge that this, this project addresses in terms of the total addressable carbon um, that, that the technology can, can affect. And the methodology that you use um, to determine how, how uh, impactful uh, the climate uh, impact is, is uh, an important part of, uh, of the application. So again, we want to see a high likelihood of the success actually mattering for the environment and for climate change. So frequently asked questions that we get. How does the cost share work? Um, again, 50% of your grant request uh, needs to be matched by cost share from your company or your partners. Uh, out of that 50% cost share requirement, 20% of that is required to come from cash, and the remaining 80% can come from in-kind labor or in-kind contributions. What qualifies as clean energy? Um, there is a definition that you can look up for this in the General Laws of Massachusetts, uh, Section 1, Chapter 23J. Um, it is basically a significant um, reduction in uh, non-renewable uh, resource use coming primarily from sources like the sun, uh, wind, hydro, uh, biomass, things of that nature, uh, with fossil fuels or other non-renewables, and also nuclear um, not counting as clean energy. So what is the expected duration of the project? Um, awardees are given 24 months to complete their demonstration project. Uh, your project does not have to be 24 months. It can be 12, it can be 18, it can be 6. Um, again, the, the project timeline is something that we'll evaluate as to whether or not it looks like you have listed out a reasonable amount of time for you to demonstrate your technology. Other frequently asked questions? Um, is the spotlight a carve-out? So the, the data science and machine learning uh, spotlight and all other spotlights for future and past rounds are not carve-outs. Um, if you submit an application under the data science and machine learning spotlight, we will evaluate you against the entire application pool, um, just as everybody else is. Uh, so there's no guarantee that we will accept at least one or two data science or machine learning projects. Um, it just depends on what it is that, that is submitted. Does the project site have to be in Massachusetts? Uh, no, it does not. The project can take place on any relevant site that will help demonstrate your technology, um, but we will consider the benefits to Massachusetts in the evaluation, as in, is the demonstration site actually something uh, that will demonstrate your technology is relevant to the Commonwealth? And then finally, what defines a Massachusetts-based company? Um, again, companies applying to Innovate Mass must be based in Massachusetts. Um, and that definition is contingent upon a majority of the following uh, categories of being based in Massachusetts. So every company that applies um, should have at least three of these four um, components. Um, 
So if your primary, if your company, for example, has a, a company headquarters, which it should, uh, primary manufacturing operations and primary research and development operations, but you don't do any sales or marketing, at least two of those three must be based in Massachusetts. And if your company has all four of these uh, components, then at least three of the four must be based in Massachusetts. A success story, um, an example of an Innovate Mass project is uh, Raptor Maps. Um, so Raptor Maps is a Somerville-based company um, that received an Innovate Mass grant to uh, demonstrate their UAV systems, uh, thermal cameras, uh, and its capabilities of uh, detecting defects in PV systems. Um, their demonstration uh, partner was Anel Green Power North America, um, where they demonstrated uh, their UAVs, uh, thermal cameras capabilities over uh, Anel's 3.3 thousand megawatt uh, renewable energy portfolio. Other examples of recent awardees, uh, these were all awardees that were um, awarded under the past uh, round of Innovate Maps um, last winter's. Um, Blackburn Energy is a company based in Amesbury. Um, they're partnering with a variety of demonstration partners um, listed there, Algonquin Industries, High Tech Metals, Four Star Connections, Bergstrom Inc., Maxim Liftgate Corp., and, and UMass Lowell. Um, they were awarded $127,270. Their cost share requirement, or sorry, their cost share contribution was slightly over 50%, as you can see. And their uh, their grant is to demonstrate their uh, product, RealGen, which is a software-driven hardware that harvests wasted kinetic energy uh, from a spinning drive shaft in heavy-duty freight trucks. Other examples are uh, Cambridge-based uh, Carbon Zero Advanced Research, also known as Zar Power, uh, partnering with iSun Energy, Boston Solar, and EverSource. Um, they were awarded the max uh, that can be awarded under Innovate Mass, a quarter of a million dollars, uh, to demonstrate their combined inverter and EV charger um, that can accept both solar and grid power concurrently. And the final awardee from last round was East Hampton-based SolarBlock um, with Intertech Group. Um, they were awarded uh, just over 150K um, to construct and demonstrate um, a training program for their solar wall system at Minuteman Vocational High School, which will help them get UL certification, which is necessary uh, to sell their, their solar masonry units um, in the U.S. So timeline and logistics for Innovate Mass. Uh, you can look at the application um, at the URL there. Um, all the application materials that we went over today are listed on that web page. Um, questions. Uh, Regarding uh, the program um, are due May 9th. Um, we'll be posting the responses to those questions um, on a rolling basis uh, to the main program webpage listed there. The applications um, for this round of Innovate Mass are due June 10th at 4 p.m. Eastern. Again, outreach for the Spotlight Partners in the National Grid um, under the Data Science and Machine Learning Spotlight um, those are due next week, uh, May 13th, um, to Enel and uh, National Grid. Their contact information is listed on the application, um, which is the first URL on, on this uh, slide. We'll notify finalists um, that they will that they are invited to come to Pitch Day on July 3rd. Every company invited to come to Pitch Day must undergo mandatory pitch coaching uh, between July 8th and July 19th. Um, the actual pitch session will be Tuesday, July 30th in Boston. Um, so if you anticipate you have a strong application, I would mark that date on your calendars. And then we'll announce the winners um, of, of the pitch day, the final uh, selected awardees sometime in August of this year. And so with that, I will hand it over to Ariel, who will now talk to you about the Deploy Mass program. Thanks, Logan, and thanks, Corey. Um, so first, I'm going to apologize to everybody. I'm getting over a cold, so I have a little bit of a, of a croak in my voice at the moment. Um, so thanks very much to the team for supporting on this webinar. So Deploy Mass, the second program that we're going to talk about today, is highlighted here in red on this version of our program overview slides. As you can see, this is the most um, 
uh, sort of commercialization focused grant program that we offer. It's really targeted at uh, technologies that have that TRL level eight to nine and a commercial readiness level that's similarly up there at that kind of seven, eight level. Um, this program is targeted at uh, products that are have been demonstrated. There's no more sort of product development left to do, but there are, there may still be sort of market barriers specific to the product um, that that could benefit from some additional sort of support from Mass CEC. So again, an, an overview of this program. Um, the program is enabled uh, to provide grants of up to $250,000, although contrary to Innovate Math, our average project size is much smaller under this program, again, because we're really trying to target um, those sort of specific commercialization barriers on a specific product by product basis. We do maintain the third party technical support as part of this program. Unlike Innovate Math, um, the Deploy Math program is rolling. We're always accepting applications. There is a two-step application process that I'll go over a little bit more in a moment. Um, and just to reiterate, we're focusing on um, te technology that's really ready for commercialization and sort of scale up. So the application process, um, only clean energy technology companies are eligible to apply for Deploy Math. So this is a, a technology provider grant program, not a technology customer grant program. Um, there's two phases to the application process to get funding for a deployment project under this program. Companies that are seeking project funding first apply for inclusion of the specific product that they're seeking funding for on, on our commercially ready technologies list. So this is a list of technologies that a third party technical consultant has vetted for us to say, yes, these are really ready for prime time. And that we've also reviewed and found to be sort of within our, our programmatic goals and guidelines. Companies that have a product on the CRT list um, or companies that are seeking technical assistance, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a moment, may apply for funding um, using a letter of request template that we have that I'll talk about a little bit more um, on a slide or two. So the CRT application, the Commercially Ready Technologies list application, again, it only a qual Acceptance onto this list only qualifies a product for potential future project funding. There is no funding attached to acceptance to the CRT list in and of itself. It's a fairly lightweight application. It's only a couple of pages long. And when you fill out this application, we're basically asking for an introduction to the company. Um, who are you? Where are you based? What kind of a company are you? A description of the product and a description of the product benefits. Um, companies on the CRT list, um, as, I, as I mentioned, don't get any specific funding for that, but do get permission to use our logo and the program name on marketing materials. Companies that have a product on the CRT list are eligible to submit a letter of request for funding. All of those requests for funding must include a specific uh, qualified customer site with a letter of support or a letter of commitment from that customer site. The requests also, uh, again, sort of introduce the applicant, have to describe what the project is, discuss the potential benefits of the project to the customer, um, estimate the greenhouse gas impacts, and include a budget justification, sort of how much is this going to cost and why is it going to cost that much. Potential customer sites um, can reach out to CRT list qualified companies and provide strong letters of commitment to a company funding request in order to support that, um, that sort of project application on our end. So we have a particular definition of eligible customer sites under this program. Unlike in Innovate Mass, um, all of the projects that we fund under Deploy Mass have to take place in Massachusetts. Um, and then in addition to that, in order to be eligible for funding, applicant companies have to secure a public or public interest customer site. So um, what this means is that the customer has to be either public, a municipal, state, or federal building or customer, a public school, municipal light plant, um, any federal lands or Department of Defense installations, for example, would count for this, or public interest. 
Um, and defining a customer as public interest is really at the discretion of MassDEC, but some examples of this would include things like private universities, privately run affordable housing, hospitals, really sort of um, entities that are there to serve the public. Um, and again, all of those customer sites must be located in Massachusetts. So that's for um, project funding. The Deploy Mass program also awards technical assistance grants for eligible um, company and customer site pairs. Those grants can be used for things like feasibility studies, detailed engineering scopes, and market analysis. Um, study requests do not require a preliminary CRT list application. That's because um, from our end, part of the study itself it sort of would be determining the commercially commercial readiness of the technology or it wouldn't necessarily make sense to do, for example, a detailed engineering scope for something that um, isn't, isn't uh, technologically and commercially mature enough to support that kind of engineering analysis. Um, but again, we do require that there be a letter of support or a letter of commitment from the customer um, or sort of uh, public or public interest proponent of that study. So just again, to go over a little bit of what we're looking for under this program, for the CRT list applications, we're looking for commercially ready technologies. The products are ready to be sold to a customer. Um, they're not sort of alpha or beta versions. This is the actual marketable product. They're innovative compared to the market, so there's a market need for the product, um, and what is novel about the product is clear. Um, so for example, we, we would not support under this program sort of installation of a, uh, of a conventional rooftop PV system because we already have a vibrant market for that technology. Um, we would need any applicant to really demonstrate what's novel about their, their technology compared to the state of the market. We're also looking for a strong benefit profile. So a strong potential to reduce greenhouse gases, especially um, within the Commonwealth and potential savings for customers. Um, usually we would consider those to be financial um, savings. So in sum, we're looking for something that's a good candidate for market entry. When we evaluate letters of request for funding, we're really checking to see that the project makes sense for the customer. Um, that the customer is really committed to, to sort of championing this project and seeing it through, and that there's a clear value proposition for that customer. We're also checking that the project makes sense for Mass CEC, so that there's good greenhouse gas reduction potential, and that the uh, project has good replicability and visibility. So again, what we're really looking for here is that there's a specific market barrier that's preventing this um, beneficial uh, commercially ready technology from really diffusing out into the market on its own, that there is some kind of barrier or inefficiency in the market that we can overcome through a targeted use of, of grant funding. Um, the other thing I should mention here is um, we'll, we place a special emphasis sort of going forward on the Commonwealth's uh, energy policy priorities around, for example, existing buildings and clean transportation, um, energy resilience and storage. Um, those are all areas that, that the Commonwealth is putting a lot of emphasis into in terms of our, our overall funding activities and policy going forward. So in sum, we're looking here for a good customer, a good match between the customer, the product and the program itself. Just to briefly go over the budget form that we use, this is a, a little bit of a unique um, budget form for all of the technology development programs that we run. Um, so we do ask for a budget on the overall project that's very similar to the budget form that Logan showed for Innovate Mass. In addition, we ask for this kind of pro forma or economic analysis that really demonstrates what the value of the specific product is and the specific project to the customer. And really, the, the goal of asking for this kind of analysis is making sure that there is a business case there so that we understand what the role is of the grant funding going forward. Um, the reason that we ask for this sort of analysis under this program and not under Innovate Mass, for example, under Innovate Mass, we don't necessarily expect that companies have fully worked out what their cost profile is on a product. 
for a commercially ready product, um, such as we would be looking at under the Deploy Mass program, we really expect that you know what your cost of the product is. To go over the funding limits, as I mentioned, um, this program can do up to $250,000 in grants. That depends a little bit on uh, sort of who's applying. We have different funding limits for Massachusetts-based startups, Massachusetts-based large companies, um, Massachusetts-based distributors of technologies that were developed um, most likely outside of the country, um, and then technology developers outside of Massachusetts that are seeking to um, make an entry into this market. We do require cost share, again, that sort of scales along with that um, level of support that you see there. And we have a, a, a total cap on how um, much of the product can have been sold before it's no longer eligible for grant funding under this program, which is fewer than five deployed projects or less than $500,000 in sales, whichever is larger. And again, the goal there is really to make sure that there's a specific market barrier that we are um, helping to overcome through funding with this program. So FAQs for this program. Um, can I su submit multiple products or technologies to the CRT list? Yes, um, the CRT list is product, uh, excuse me, product specific, not company specific, um, but you should submit a separate application for each product. Um, in terms of timeline, it takes around one to two months to get approved for the CRT list. Um, and similarly, around one to two months for us to evaluate an application for project funding. We use the same definition of Massachusetts-based under this program as under all of our technology development programs. Um, it's the same sort of majority-based definition that Logan mentioned earlier. Um, we do get asked a lot how customers can participate. Really, the way for customers to participate in this program is to support companies in, a, in their applications. Um, what defines a Massachusetts-based presence for, for companies of, uh, outside of Massachusetts? As you may have noticed, we have a provision under this program for supporting companies that are um, located outside of the state that are seeking to uh, sort of open up the market here. And we require that those companies, in order to receive funding under this program, have to hire at least one full-time employee in Massachusetts. Um, and then how soon after the award does, does that have to happen? Um, we put that at about within three months. So a success story under this program, um, Boston-based XL Hybrids received a Deploy Mass grant in 2017. Um, to demonstrate their uh, sort of hybrid retrofit kit for, um, for conventional internal combustion engine vehicles. Um, following their project, XL Hybrid has closed successful Series C and D financing rounds with some very large partners. And a couple of recent awardees, you can see here, I won't read all of them in detail, but we have a range of sort of project funding and um, feasibility sort of technical assistance funding that we've done under the program recently. All right, I'll hand it back to Corey and then we'll get into some questions. Um, just to quickly highlight some of the other funding opportunities that could have potential synergies with our program. Um, the NYSERDA National Offshore Wind Consortium recently opened. Um, they are accepting applications on a rolling basis until December 2019 for demonstration and development of technologies that innovatively remove barriers and address issues essential to the offshore wind industry. Um, there's also the BIRD Energy Program with the Department of Energy and the Israel Ministry of Energy um, and the Israel Innovation Authority to kind of co-develop clean energy technologies. Um, and then you can see at the bottom we have our Amplify Mass Program mentioned, which accepts clean energy focused applications on a rolling basis. 
I'll leave this here for a moment, and then we will begin to answer questions. All right, so kick it off. Our project is clean tech with strong public interest impact, but with um, a difficult to measure greenhouse gas reduction. Is it necessary to show greenhouse gas impact? Yeah, so I'd say do your best on this one. Um, just show the logic of where greenhouse gas reductions would be coming from. Um, one thing that we should say is that we are legally barred from considering what are um, sort of commonly considered to be co-benefits. Um, like we can take them into account, but we can't make a funding decision um, to something that only reduces, for example, particulate matter, but doesn't reduce greenhouse gases. Um, thank you. What constitutes establishing a Massachusetts presence for both Innovate Mass and Deploy Mass? So for Deploy Mass, if you are seeking to be um, considered a Massachusetts-based company, that's the same um, definition that Logan went over earlier in the in the session. I'll let him um, sort of repeat that in a moment. If you're outside of the state and seeking to sort of establish a presence but still be considered based outside of Massachusetts, you have to hire a full-time employee that's based in Massachusetts. Yeah, and so the requirements for being based in Massachusetts um, there's sort of four categories that all companies should have um, at least someone working on, uh, which are primary sales and marketing, primary manufacturing operations, primary research and development operations, and also a, a company headquarters. So of those four, a company must have at least three of them. If they have three of those four, at least two must be based in Massachusetts. If your company is involved in all four of those operations, at least three of those four must be based in Massachusetts. So you can think of it as a, a majority of, of those operations listed on slide uh, 16. Thank you. Um, for Innovate Mass, do applicants need to submit a letter of intent? And if so, when is the deadline? Uh, no, no letter of intent is necessary. Um, letters of support from uh, demonstration partners are encouraged. All right. If project partners are out of state, does that disadvantage applicants? No. Again, if a project partner is outside of the state, that's that's absolutely fine. We just want to see, uh, or hear rather, what is the story or the narrative of how that demonstration outside of the state would be replicable in some way in Massachusetts, or what are the, the benefits of your technology to the Commonwealth? We should say also, not every project that we support um, is going to have a market in the state. We understand that there are some industries that are not um, sort of pursued here versus other areas in the country or other areas in the world, but they have large greenhouse gas um, impacts. And there I would just say what we want to see is, again, a, a demonstration of sort of the company's connection to the state and what are the benefits for the state from, from kind of an economic development side. Great. Um, do applicants need to have the funds for the cost share existing before the submission of the proposal to Innovate Mass? You don't need to have the funds in a bank account. We highly um, encourage you to have the funds committed. Um, if you don't have the funds committed, that would be a problem if you were awarded um, and then we were trying to contract um, because we do write that cost share into the contract. So awardees are at that point kind of legally obligated to, to have that cost share. Um, available at the time that they would contract and then be invoicing us. We require a cost share certification along with each invoice. Um, and we do have um, a, an audit provision under all the contracts um, in part for this purpose. Great. Um, are Enel and National Grid interested in partnering on clean energy projects not involving data science and machine learning? So potentially. Um, Really, 
the the spotlight opportunity um, and what they the proposals that they uh, agreed to review were for data science and machine learning. But I'm you can still reach out to them with your project proposal to see if they might be interested. Um, and if they're not, then you can just submit a regular Innovate Mass application. Could you please repeat how we can find the Enel and National Grid contact information for this program? Sure. So on the um, the RFP uh, uh, website, so it's masscc.com slash request dash proposals dash innovate mass. There are there's a clumping of six links uh, with the application forms, um, which are located just above the timeline table. The bottommost link it says the data science and machine learning spotlight invitations for partnership, and now a national grid. That is a document outlining what Enel and National Grid are looking for um, in these partnership opportunities, and their contact information is listed at the bottom of their respective pages. Good to know. Um, for Innovate Mass, as well as Deploy, I suppose, um, could or how would benefits be included in the hourly rate? Um, we list out what. Um, what's able to be included in terms of like tax contributions, benefits, and so forth in the RFP. That's a definition that comes straight from our legal department. Um, so I encourage you to look at, look at that section of the RFP in terms of allowable expenses and cost share um, and reach out by email if you have any specific questions on that. Thank you. Do you need names and addresses of angel investors and the cost share work plan? No. No, you do not need names and addresses in your cost share work plan. Yeah. And you can list them collectively as like angel investors. We understand that that's a common source of funding for startups at this stage. How do you define technology readiness level? Do you have your own definitions or do you use the standard NASA produced definition? We use the standard NASA produced definition. Yeah, the main difference there is that we we replace the word space with like a general definition of what it means to be in the field. We do not generally expect these projects to go into space. On the subject of TRL, how do you like to see the advancement of a project's TRL by the end of Innovate Mass? And how do you balance software versus hardware solutions? That's a good question. Um, I would say software and hardware solutions are evaluated equally. Um, and the TRL advancement that we like and sort of expect to see is getting you past the demonstration stage. Um, so in terms of the TRL range, you can think of uh, Innovate Mass ideally getting you towards eight. Um, nine would be great, uh, but getting past the demonstration stage is, is kind of the desired goal. Great. And then just in terms of the, the software versus hardware question, um, we do understand that what it means for something to be a field demonstration of software is going to be a little bit different than for a field demonstration of hardware. Um, I think, uh, you know, what we've seen in the past with software projects is that compared to just having sort of synthetic training data sets, for example, you're using real customer data or compared to having um, only uh, sort of the internal version of the UI, you actually have a customer facing UI. So I think that there, there are ways to evaluate that and we are aware of some of the subtleties around that for software versus hardware. Um, in terms of evaluating the funding ask in Innovate Mass applications, does the amount being asked influence the competitiveness of the application? For example, an application asking for a larger amount compared to an application asking for a lower amount. So we have a, a fairly fixed budget per round. Um, 
in 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 that sense it does make you more competitive to have a lower ask and to have higher cost share um it's not obviously we have awarded projects in the past at the maximum with the minimum cost share if they're really highly aligned with the program in other ways um but just as any other grant program structured in this way i would say yes to the extent that you can sort of allow us to do more with the the program budget that is appealing is there a single winner in the innovate match competition or are there multiple and also are proposals evaluated more against each other competitively or against the criteria of the round that's a good question um, so typically there's uh, three to five awardees per round. I'd say that that's a normal range, about 10 to 12 annually across the two solicitations. Um, in terms of evaluating proposals against the criteria of the competition or against each other, um, it's primarily against the criteria of the program, but there is, of course, a little bit of evaluation across the pool of applicants. Yeah, I would say... Um... You know, we do a two-stage down selection, as was as was sort of gestured at in the the program logistics slide. Um, we have a sort of a paper review stage and then a finalist pitch day. Um, when we're doing the paper review stage, we're really trying to 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 get down to only the programs that sorry only the the proposed projects that we think sort of score well against what the program is looking for. And then once we're at the finalist level, then it's really more of a competition against each other, is how I would think about it. Um, so in, in that sense, both. Great. Um, is salary an element factored into cost share? Yeah, it can be. Um, we do accept in-kind cost share um, for both of the programs that we've discussed today. Um, the the um, the only thing to keep in mind there is the the limit on what percentage of the cost share can be in kind for Innovate Math. Um, how many letters of support does a typical applicant to Innovate Math have? One to three, generally. <laughs> We've seen more. We would we would advise applicants to include letters of support from basically everybody important to the project's success. Great. Um, could you please go more into depth into the role that the third party technical consultant will play? Sure. So the the third party technical consultant um, can be seen as having uh, two. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ariel. Uh, sort of main. Um, main roles or, or main priorities. The first is uh, project management. You know, they will be checking in with you uh, at least once a month, if not more, to make sure the project is on track and to uh, you know, answer any questions that you might have or assist how they can, and then relay that information to us so that we are aware of how the project is progressing. Um, and then the second function that they, uh, they perform uh, is the confidentiality screening. So we as a public agency are um, required by law to release documents under a public records request. So if there is confidential information um, that is essential to determining that your project is actually um, on course, we would have you send that to the consultant um, through a secure files transfer uh, protocol. Uh, we would never see the files. We would never uh, receive the files. Um, so that way CADMIS, or sorry, the technical consultant can uh, screen and verify your confidential materials and then just let us know that they have done the review and that the materials uh, uh, demonstrate the, the, the milestone that they were supposed to. Great. Um, kind of switching gears to deploy mass, how long does it take for a eligible product to get on the CRT list? And from there, how long could it take to develop a project? So we try to keep both of those at, at around like one to two months in terms of the review cycle. Um, and sometimes it can depend on how complicated the analysis is that we have to do under each, um, under each step. So for example, if you're 
close to commercially ready, then it might take us a little bit longer to figure out how to handle that. Um, but in general, we try to keep it at around one to two months. Great. Um, um, so if a company has multiple products or technologies they think could be eligible for the CRT list, should they submit multiple proposals? Um, yeah, you, you should submit one CRT list application per product that you want listed on the CRT list, and then um, each sort of project funding letter of request is, is individual as well. Great. Well, a huge thank you to Eric Logan Hughes and Ariel Horowitz for answering these questions and presenting today. Um, a final reminder that we will be posting a recording of the webinar on our website, as well as the answers to the questions in our FAQ section. Um, thank you again for attending. The RFP for Innovate Mass will close on June 10th. Um, and yeah, that concludes our webinar. Thank you.